Hello everyone joining us online and thank you once again for joining us for another study into God's Word. We are continuing our quarter of studies where we're looking at making friends for God and the joy of sharing in the work of winning souls for the Kingdom. You're here with myself Colleen and with um, Pedro and um, before we go any further we're just going to start with a quick word of prayer. Pedro could you please pray for us? Thank you, Lord, for the time, and thank you for your word. Bless us with the lead of your Holy Spirit and understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So today, viewers, we're um, looking at um, getting involved, um, an exciting way that we can all get involved in winning souls for the kingdom, in working with Jesus um, and making friends for God. So this lesson is about, um, in summary, it's about looking at small groups and looking at the, the importance of small groups, what small groups are, and also how we can get involved in small groups. Um, but before we actually go any further into this whole idea of small groups, I just wanted us to actually define what a small group is. And the reason why I think it's that important, because from my point of view, I've always understood small groups to be when you have a meeting at your home and you invite people to. So when we're talking about small groups and we're looking at the context of small groups, is that what a small group is? I think small group is just in, with regard to how many people. Right. Now, if you're looking at why you need not many but few, this is a different aspect of small group but when you hear small group yeah. you first need to look at numbers okay. as simple mm. as this if you are in a conversation and I think this is what probably happens to you you are in a conversation a church conversation and you hear about small groups mm. uh, your mind automatically yeah. goes to that yeah but a few people meeting, ha it's, doing it's house some, meetings. Yes, in someone's home. House. Yeah, yeah that, that could be. But what you're really looking at, mm. objectively, is just few as opposed to many. Okay. So, in the context of small groups, it's not, it's not necessarily focused on restricted to just meeting in the home, basically. No. No. Small groups few as opposed to many now if you discuss why what for and so on mm. then we can expand on mm. the different mm. functions mm. that those small groups yeah. may give themselves mm. to and how and why but first of all we're looking at few as opposed to many. Right, okay, so that's the context really. Yes. It's just that it's a smaller gathering, it's a Absolutely. smaller amount of people. So is there any like biblical examples that you think when it comes to small groups? I mean, I've got one in particular. I don't know if we can look at that. I'm not sure if you've got some as well, but um, the one that I thought of or the one that um, is found in Luke. So if we go to Luke 6, and it's basically about in regards to Jesus and the, the, Calling the, the disciples. And the disciples. Yes. So I'll just read that. So in Luke 6 and verse 12 and 13, it says, um, um, for, if you're reading with us um, online, I'm in Luke, St. Luke, um, chapter 6, and I'm looking at verse 12 and 13. And it says, on one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, whom he selected, who who whom he also designated apostles. So that's an example of Jesus himself, like working within a small group context, isn't it? Yeah, but then again, Jesus did not work only with twelve people. No. You you. If you read Matthew 10, for instance, you hear about the mission of the 70 that Jesus sent out. Mm. You with me? Jesus sent out 70 people, at least in Matthew 10. If you look at 
Acts chapter 1, uh, I believe verse 15, around verse 15, when they were in the upper room, the text says they were about 120. The number is not even exact, but about 100. Would you say that 120 is... Not really. A small group. No, that's but not they, they were all in one place, 120. Mm -hmm. And then in that same text, you are also told that those were there with the 12 disciples. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Luke 6, 13 and, um, 12 and 13, uh, to establish the fact that small groups did exist, you're not necessarily looking at this for the sake of small groups. You're looking at this for something else. Mm -hmm. It seems from the biblical perspective that God always moves from small to big. Mm -hmm. For instance, Jesus chose those 12 people. But if you look at the text in Luke 6, he chose those 12 people among a bigger group mm. that was with him. Yes. So it's about function, functionality and achievement and purpose when the Bible presents small groups. If you look, and it's always from small to big, if you look at the first human family, Genesis 1, 26 to 28, particularly 27, 28, Jesus, um, God says, Jesus was also there, God says um, to those two people, what? He blessed them and he told them what? Adam and Eve. Oh, be fruitful. Be fruitful and, and what? And multiply upon the face of the earth. Small to big. It's a scheme, it's a format, it's a plan that is or can be perceived in everything in life where you go from small to big because it fits the context in which God has organized this world mm -hmm. to function. So when you talk about small groups within the context of witnessing or uh, um, um, evangelizing, that context, that, um, not context, that aspect also, or concept rather, exists. In Genesis 12, how many people did God choose to go from one place to an unknown place. The Bible says he chose one man. He chose Abraham. Mm. But Abraham went with a number of people. Mm. But more interestingly, in, from the beginning in, in verse 1 to 3 of chapter 12, he also ensures Abraham that he will become huge mm. in number and he reiterates that consistently in chapter 17 you're with me so god always goes from small to big but the interest of beginning small is in how functional how um how much you can achieve mm -hmm. with having small groups mm -hmm. developing. Are you with me? Yes. So you don't have small groups for the sake of having small groups. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to say. Yeah. There, there is a functionality mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. And then also to add to that, the whole idea of small groups is that sometimes... Um, we think of small groups or, or individuals have said that we use small groups as, co as, as almost like a replacement for like that larger, say, gathering. But that's not the case, isn't it? Small groups is not 
an alternative to or a replacement no. for being a part of a larger a larger um, no, organization? No, that, 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 that would defeat the very purpose of God, yes. which is to cover the, the whole earth with his knowledge. However, again, I speak of functionality, efficiency. You take, for instance, Moses and the children of Israel oh, in the yes, wilderness. Oh, yes, I actually have that text here. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Do you go or I go? With no, 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 yeah, yeah. So you, you, you take I Moses was, yeah. and, and the children of Israel in Exodus uh, 18. Yes, yeah, shall I read it? I actually have it here, 1821. Okay, go ahead. Just quickly. And it says, um, Exodus 18, if you're reading with us at home, well, I'm on Exodus 18, 21. And it says, um, but select capable men from all the people, from all the people, men who, who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties and tens. Absolutely. But what I want, this is very good, but what I want to first look at in this passage, in fact, the whole thing is important, is important. But what I want to look at, Moses comes, that's the story. Moses comes out of Egypt with all these people and he's one leader. He's helped by his sister and his brother and they don't even go along very well uh, sometime. And he meets Jethro, his father-in-law. And in verse... Um, 17 and 18 and Moses father in law said unto him the thing that thou doest is not good that is referring to the whole people co coming to him for judgment yeah. and he sits there yeah. from morning to evening uh, judging these people so his father in law says yeah. man this is not good yeah, what you're doing because he says here the work is too heavy for you, you in verse 18 in verse 18 he says to him look not only will you wear these people out but you will we will use the term today burn out mm. you will burn out these people before they get a chance to reach the promised land and you will burn yourself out in mm. the same way mm. and both groups that is you and them will die in the wilderness with no hope. Therefore, the text you read now in 21 mm -hmm. comes into place. You need to organize this huge congregation of at, or, of at least two million people mm -hmm. in small groups mm -hmm. and let them be functional. Mm -hmm. This is the reason for small groups. So when we transpose that to church, the church can be 144,000 people. Mm. Yeah. But it will still need to be organized mm. in small groups so that it is efficient in its ministry. Yeah. And those small groups, like Adam and Eve, like Abraham and his family, because they are small and manageable and functional and adequate for purpose, they will develop into more and more and more as it is intended according to God's plan. Yes. So you can have that big church, but in terms of witnessing, in terms of being efficient, in terms of functioning, in terms of being fit for purpose, mm -hmm. small groups, mm -hmm. is something you definitely need to look into. Mm -hmm. So um, how should small groups be organized for service? Um, the reason why I ask that is because if we think about the analogy of, um, we've spoken before about the body being made up of different parts and we all have different gifts and Good. we come together. But then even within the body, you've got different systems. You've got the circularity system, you've got the digestive system you've got the respiratory system. So practically, how do we have all these small groups and come together for service? And we need to think of it in the context of witnessing and reaching, reaching souls for Christ, because that's what this whole quarter is about. So how does that work practically? So, so Paul comes, to, to, to use the term, Paul comes in 1 Corinthians 12 mm -hmm. with the analogy of the body yes. for the church, yes. how the church is supposed to function. Now remember, that Corinthian church is a mess. Yeah. 
It is. And <laughs> it, is, it is dysfunctioning, really. So again, when Paul comes with this idea of the body having different members yet being one, um, as an example for the church, having many people but led by one spirit, he is looking into the functionality of that body, that church. You alluded to the body, the, the physical body, human body, having systems. Mm. Uh, you said uh, respiratory digestive, system, digestive, digestive system. system. What would the, the, the respiratory system uh, be composed of? Mm. Like the lungs. The lungs? Yeah. The, how do you call it, uh, trachea? Esophagus, yeah. Yeah, and then the nostrils. The nose, yeah. And so, so these are one group. Yeah. Then you have the lymphatic system, for instance. What are they composed of? A different... Lymph nodes. Yes, and then the kidneys and, and all these things. They form one group to, 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 to do one type of work. One job, yeah. So the analogy of the body is you have clusters of organs working together to make the body functional fully. The spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. um, let's read. Yeah, I'll put it here. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 12, you have a number of gifts all those gifts can, like the body, be the different systems mm. within the body of Christ and work together amongst themselves. The respiratory system, the digestive system, the nervous system, the lymphatic system, um, and whatever system you have. But eventually, what is really important is the fact that they work together yes. in one body. body and with unity mm. all those systems let's read two verses from first Corinthians 12 can you read for me verse 12 and verse 13 please okay so um, if you're reading with us at home I mean first Corinthians 12 um, verse 12 and 13 yeah. and I'm reading from the New International Version and it says the body is a unit though it be made up of many parts and though all its parts are many they form one body so it is with Christ for we were all baptized by one spirit into one body whether Jew or Greek slave or free we were all given one spirit to drink. So you see, the, the idea behind the small group concept is to tighten the unity. All those, when you, it's much more manageable to have four, six to twelve people like the disciples who were always with Jesus in the midst of seventy. Mm. To achieve something mm. than to deal with the 70 at the yes. same time. So small groups within bigger groups will allow for that. But what is really important is the idea of the unity. Mm. When Jesus prays on behalf of his disciples in John 17, what does he pray for? that they may be one. That could be a thousand, two thousand, a billion, but they may be one. But what we're saying is, by functioning in a certain way, like small groups being dedicated to function in different places, with different responsibilities, in different ways, allows more efficiently mm. for that unity 
that oneness to happen. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So it's a matter of all organizing and functioning to achieve oneness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, because it's like talks about the one body and the one spirit, the one baptism. In Ephesians 4, mm -hmm. uh, 4 to 6. Yes. Do you want to read that? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we have time? Yeah, just read really. <laughs> it. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. So Ephesians 4, verses 4 to 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called into one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Father and God of all, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. And, and that example is practical in the upper room. In, in Acts 15, sorry, Acts 1 verse 15, the text says they were about 120, probably more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but in verse 14, it says, and they were of one accord, of one mind and they were doing one thing together so the numbers look it's not really what we're looking at we're looking at the unity but what we're saying is through small numbers it is much more manageable mm, okay yeah so you talked about function a while ago when you're talking about this and I just wanted to look at it practically now. So if we were in a small group within the area that we lived, I wanted to look at the functionality of small group because we've already discussed about the fact that, um, that God uses small group as a vehicle um, to grow his church. And also we, we actually also understand that within a small group context, there are many non-Christians that might find it easier and more approachable to be part of a small group than to be than to go to say a large congregation so in in regards to functionality and practicality um and the and the dynamics um of a small group how how should a small group be be um, be organized practically L like the fingers of a hand mm. you have a hand and you have fingers none of those of these fingers you see mm. is like the other mm. yet they work together. Every member should be part of a hand. Mm -hmm. Every member should be a, a, a finger. Practically, we receive different gifts. So we have different um, responsibilities, but we work together as the fingers of a hand to achieve what the hand is supposed to achieve. If it is scratching the head, if it is handshake, if it is cooking, all the fingers in their functions participate in that one goal. Mm -hmm. But the thumb will allow one function. This one will allow, the index will allow one function. This in small groups within the church is the same. For instance, mm -hmm. you have people who can work on yeah, I'm looking for a lot of practical example. People who can who can work on health. Okay, so maybe looking at health as an example. You you you're looking at health programs. Yes. You don't want to be efficient. You don't want people who don't fit. Right. Um. In, in within this, mm -hmm. according to the needs that you have, to okay. be part of that. Mm -hmm. Let them be elsewhere where they will be mm -hmm. efficient. Um, within um, the group of deacons and deaconesses. This is a small group of people. They have a particular function. Mm -hmm. They will function with that. Then you have the pastoral team. Mm -hmm. The pastoral team has a function also. Okay, so from a practical aspect I'm talking about. This so, is practical. So, like, say for example, we use the context of health. 
So would these people who are in this health small group, so they would come together, they'll probably plan programs, have a set goal, they would pray together, meet collectively together. So would that be a part of the practical element of being within a small group? Uh, absolutely. Hmm. What we're saying is small groups are more efficient than large groups. So if you five in a group, like five fingers in a hand, there is no place for you to be idle. Yes. So you will organize yourself mm -hmm. as a group with responsibilities among the five okay. people forming this group. Mm -hmm. So if you have a health group, yes. somebody needs to do the advertising, right. somebody yes. needs to do the contacting, okay. somebody needs to do the presentation, but you function as a group and yes. this um, this template mm -hmm. is applicable in every mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of, of ministry. Mm -hmm. And I guess like all those, those, although those individuals were doing different things, they'd all be still praying and studying together and moving towards that common goal, which is like the health, the yeah. health example, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. They will do what it takes yeah. for them to be efficient in ministry. Mm -hmm. If in ministry you have to meet, to pray, mm -hmm. to study, mm -hmm. uh, that's what you need to do. To plan, that's what you need to do. To move forward, that's what you need to do. Whatever it takes, it's the idea of being efficient. Mm -hmm. It's much better to have five people involved and the work goes forward mm -hmm. than to have 20 people involved and only four mm -hmm. are actually mm -hmm. active. All right, so in closing now, um, I'm just going to ask one more question. Because um, this lesson is about, um, it's about um, getting excited and being involved. And I think if someone's listening to this and they want to be a part of a small group, I mean, where do they go from here? You need to know what your gift is. Ooh. Like the body. Yes. We took the example in 1 Corinthians 12. Okay. Paul is speaking about the gifts. Mm -hmm. My kidney works within the lymphatic system, mm -hmm. yeah? It, it, it is linked to the rest of the body, mm -hmm. but it has close Connection. organs with which it works mm -hmm. in order for it to be effective mm -hmm. in its function. So, what is your gift? Yes. Find the system in which that gift mm -hmm. is used. And I think efficiently. We're going to, I think um, we're going to touch on that at some yes, point. Yes, we will touch on this at some point. But the idea is, yes. you need within the body of Christ, you need to find yes. the system to which you belong. To, if yeah. you if you a stomach, you're mm. part of the digestive system. Yes. So you will function within, within that. the digestive system. Yes. And then, but still be a part of that larger body. Absolutely. Okay. That's really good. So I think it's important then, in this whole context of small groups, is going back to the question of, you know, what is God calling you to do? In what system does God want you to operate in? Yes. And sometimes that can be quite difficult for individuals to, to actually know where they fit in, but that's an important element yeah. of being a part of small groups. In terms of efficiency, fitting, the, fitting small the, group, wider body. the small group concept is really about efficiency much the same way yes. it would be with your body yes okay that's fantastic well thank you for joining us today um and thank you viewers for um tuning in and listening to the discussion with us today i pray that you were blessed i pray that um that if you want to that you might you know take up on the idea of being a part of a, a small group or even starting a small group yourself within your local um, local congregation. We are going to go into a bit more depth in regards to gifts at some point, but also more so in regards to small groups when, when we do our Facebook Live. So please come along and join us on a Sabbath, on a Saturday for our, our Facebook Live. So thank you for joining us um, and um, goodbye.